Hi and welcome back to the Low Level Devil Channel's Build Your Own Linux Distribution from Scratch series. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, then you should check them out first to make sure you can follow along. I'll put a link to the playlist in the description. In this video we're finishing up the initial cross-compile build environment so we can start putting together our package manager before we start building packages. This video will start on entering the change root environment so we can finish building these final temporary tools. So let's get started. So we're going to go back to this build page and we're going to go to this section entering the change root build additional temporary tools. So let me go to the introduction. I'm just going to skip through this first part. And this is changing the ownership. So uh, one reminder in here is that these uh, commands need to be por performed by root. So we need to make sure this all goes back to root's permissions. And we can do that inside of our script. Let's say create. Actually, first, I think we can comment all these out because we built those. You want to uncomment them before you check your script in though because you know once we get everything running then it should all just run start to finish so let's copy this here so we're gonna use sudo to do that as well and I'm just gonna put lib64 at the end of this list okay and yeah you wanna make sure LFS is set of course And we need to do dash E in order to do that to make sure the LFS gets passed onto the sudo. And so next we're going to be preparing the virtual file systems. So we'll be making some device nodes and uh, binding to our dev environment. So let's start by putting those down here. And actually, you know what? We should use a separate script for this. So I'm going to take this whole section. I'm just going to cut it. And we'll create a new file. I'm going to do it at this same level, or no, actually, under the build scripts, we'll put it. So create a new file. I'm going to call it prepare truth environment. So let's see prep dash to root okay so I'm going to paste that in here and that'll actually be run by the sudo user the uh, root user essentially and we're going to add our little protection here to make sure that LFS is set remember that question mark will make the script fail if it's not so now I think we can start copying some of these over. First thing is to create this dev proxys run virtual file systems. And we're going to make a couple nodes, the console and the dev null. And those are character devices we're just setting up. So now we want to bind our dev. And uh, actually we want to do these as well and this SHM I'm not too sure about. I think some distributions have it. All right, let me go back to, and I'm gonna create another one called mount vert. So this will be where we actually mount the virtual file system. So we'll have the prep root, and then we're going to call Dist tools, dist root, build env, and build scripts slash mount vert dot sh. So now in here is where we want to actually do this binding because we're going to actually want to enter the change root environment separately from making it as well. So we might as well store that as a separate script. And we'll do bash dash e to ensure the script fails if it uh if that fails. Okay. 
and we'll just take this whole thing. Some host machines have this SHM folder. I'm not aware of any that do, but we'll take their word for it. So we have dev, binding dev PTS, then we're making our proc mounts, our sys, sysffs mounts, and our temp, and run. And um, we should be good to go. So let's move on to the next one. This is how we actually enter the change root environment. And we aren't going to do it exactly like here because this assumes you're going to be walking through all these steps manually, but we're writing scripts to set it up, so we don't really want this bin bash part. Because this would just log you in to bash. Actually, this script should be done here, so... Or, actually, yeah, we want to mount one more thing. We want to have access in our change root environment to our scripts, so... I'm going to actually mount the path for our scripts as well. And I'm putting this safety check up here, too. And one for... So that's, we're going to say mounting and binding dist root. Okay, so now we can copy this. So we want to make sure that we bind that dist root to slash dist so that we have access to those scripts. We'll have to actually make that directory first, too. Okay, moving on. So we're going to copy this change root script and put it in the prep to root. And that's all correct. That's set up. Just doing some double checking here. Okay, so these are all the different variables we're passing into it, the environment variables. And this last part we want to change, because we don't want to actually just log into bash. We want to run a script in that change root environment. So we'll go to dist slash build env slash build scripts. And then we will call it, let's see... Call it finish true root environment or something like that. Then we want to copy this mount vert here and we're going to have an unmount script as well. Alright, so that should be it. We just need to create this unmount script. Should I just, let me just copy this and rename it. You mount vert. And we essentially want to do these kind of in backwards order. So what we're going to do is you mount and that LFS dist. Um, that one I don't think I have to worry about. Let's see. That's just a make directory, so. Yeah, I don't need it. So then we'll unmount run. Sys, I mean, all these don't have to be in reverse order, but definitely this dev PTS and dev1 does. Because you have to, yeah, you'll have to uh, unmount dev PTS before you can unmount dev. So I'm just going to take all this out. So now we should be unmounting those virtual file systems uh, right after we do the change root script. Unmounting and unbinding. Okay, so next we can go on to... Let's see, actually I'm going to take this prep 
root, and I'm going to rename that. Instead of prep, it's more like build to root because we're going to be building those tools inside there. And in our create script, after we're done with those initial builds, then we're going to run sudo e, and it should just be build scripts slash prep dash no not prep build scripts slash build dash root dot sh okay now moving on go back and change the permissions so that we can actually run the scripts uh, I'll just do sudo and let's see so then we can go on and test this initial let's actually go and look at the permissions make sure it's right cool. yeah yeah actually we want user and group to both be able to execute this so we'll make it 777 775 and if you're not familiar with these permissions these are actually r w and x and they represent individual bits so like all bit set would be 7 you know this would be 5 because bit 1 is set and bit 3 is set so this would be 1 2 and 4 so if you think about that's 4 plus 1 is 5 okay so now we can go on to finishing this up Let's go on to the next section. So there's some more directories to create. This is kind of the initial set of user directories, etc, sysconfig directories, and all that. So we might as well create those all inside here as well. Inside that change root environment. So go back up to build change root and finish. Oh, yeah, we need to create our finish script. We'll call it finish root. All right, I'm going to just copy this name, create a new file, and paste that in there. Let's see, so in there we want to start by using the shebang thing so we're sure that bash is what it's running against. It should be, I believe, but just to be safe. I'm just copying and pasting these verbatim, really. These are all the boots, the uh, sysconfig, libs, user environments. These are the run links. And we're starting to install the main directories now. Okay. And we'll go on essential files and sim links so these actually don't know that we want to create all these in the change room environment so I think what we're going to do is well this one we can do and maybe that echo this one just creates the etc hosts file but if you don't have the etc password file then it's not going to know who you are when you log in. So, yeah, I'm just going to put LLDOS or something for that. So if you don't have this password file before you log in, then it's not going to know the name of the user that logged in. So we'll just take these and maybe put them in, in the prepare or the create script. We don't need this test stuff either. Um, these touching files, we should be able to take that. Alright, so now we'll go back to, let me see which file. Alright, so in our build to root environment, we're just going to put them right before we change root. And instead of etc password, I'm going to do LFS etc password. 
and same for this one. Dollar LFS. So these are just default groups that a lot of Linux systems use with their default IDs and default users that are created. Now moving to the finished cheroot, I'm just going to put a message here. Finished cheroot build. Well, actually, we'll do some building there, but for now I'm just going to put that message out so we can see if it all ran successfully. And let's see. Make sure that the permissions are all set right. Okay, now after clearing my console, let's look again. We're in the right place. I'm going to run dot slash create dot sh, and let's see. We see all these directories are created. They're mounting and binding. Distroots all correct. Yeah, binds. And then all these directories are created. Our var run lock installs are done, finish to root build, and unbinding. So now let's take a look if we try to run this again. Then, then it should have no errors, because we always want to be able to run this tr twice without it breaking. So let's clear, run again, and there's some error, let's see. Yeah, make node, you can't call if it already exists, so we need to put some checks in there. So we don't want to run these if they already exist. So we'll do if not test dash f LFS dev console then and then fi. And now I think that will work. And I think we want to put a check around the ETC password as well. That way, if for some reason it got modified, we don't overwrite it with a completely new file. I'm just to include group in that as well. Right. Now, if we try to run this. Okay. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's still a problem. So, yeah, if you read the man pages, you'll see this should be C. <laughs> I did some man checking on that, so let's run that after changing it to C since it's a character device. So let's see, create. And it looks good, so we'll go back to this finished root file. I'm going to just add a comment here start building other packages because that's what we're going to go to next. Alright. And let's go on to GCC std lib pass 2. So for this, what I think I'm going to do is create some separate scripts, starting with chr as the name. So we'll start with the very first one. We'll do chr-libstdcpp-pass-2.sh. So this will be how we do our, and actually we want to do those in there as well. So let's take those over and put them in this file, and we should be good as they are, I believe. So now we can just start copying the code for these into here. The next one's the build. The configure script. And again, most of these will be pretty simple builds, not too complicated. So then a make and make install. And OK, moving on. We'll go to the next one, which is get text. This one's also pretty simple. I'm going to copy from base for that. CHR get text. I just copy this first section and make and then looks like we need to couple of, copy a couple of files to user bin all right and that should be all for get text 
And I'm going to just speed things up here since I'm just kind of repetitively doing these tasks. I go to the next one, bison. Go to the next one, pearl, and do the same. Go to python, do the same. Just to make you not have to sit through me typing all this stuff slowly. And then util Linux is the last of this initial section. All right, so now we move on to cleaning up temporary tools. Um, not so worried about that because this is just a temporary environment. It's not going to be our actual machine that we're running. So let's go up to one more level. And in Finish Chirrut, we want to actually execute these different scripts that we created with bash dash e. So let's see, chirrut dash chr libstd cpp pass 2.sh. Oh, and if we remember. We're going to need that. Let's see. We're going to need the, the, these different til utilities. I'm just going to copy and paste them all. So I'll copy them. Go to the not build finish chirrut. Yeah, finished true. There it is. All right, so it's a couple more that we needed, I think. Is it GCC? And I think we needed Bison too, but for now we got that. Oh, we got Bison down there. So. And we do the same thing for these. Let's see, actually, we want to use like this. Um, actually, we need that. We need a CD to dist root. Let me just think about this here. Yeah, that should be right. So let's put that in, finish to root. I'm going to do this before we start running those. And it's actually going to be slash dist slash build env. And then we'll do build scripts slash script name. Alright, so let's copy that, paste it a few times. And let's see, the next one is get text. But it's chr get text. And yep, chr get text. Copy that. Nope, oh, wrong place. Then bison. Copy bison. chr pearl. Pearl. And we're making our way through this. We're actually not too far off from finishing our build environment. We have some temporary tools, but I'll kind of zip through those as we go along. So now let's go on to Python and we'll grab this. CHR Python. Text info. You want to make sure you have these in the right order too because some of these actually rely on others in order to build. So if you do these out of order, it's likely going to break things. Util Linux. And I think that should be it for those. Get rid of this last one. And we should be able to check, let's check this next section first. Uh, 
Okay, I think we should be able to run this. Actually, let's make sure we did this cleanup part right. So I'm going to go back. Um, let me just go up. So I want to go to the section. Let's see. Yeah, cleaning up and saving the temporary services. Yeah. So actually, let's do these uh, cleanups here because we want to make sure things don't end up building with any static files and all that. So then we're going to go into that finished root. Put that there. Take these there. This will also make our archive smaller at the end because we want to save a copy of this whole built system in case we don't want to rebuild it. And the unmounting we already did. We can do these strips too, the strips debugging symbols from the libraries and the binaries. And strip any unneeded utilities. Yeah, we're actually going to need to do that after we exit. So after this unmount, that's when we're going to want to do the st stripping of them. Because they'll still be in use while we're running that in that environment. And then this last step is to back up. We actually want to make this as small as we can so we can get rid of some things. So we did the stripping, that's going to get rid of debug symbols and all that. So let's also get rid of anything in that sources directory because we won't need that. Our package manager is going to download the sources itself. So LFS sources. And then we would run this tar command after we run this. Let's see. Okay, now we let's go to the LFS directory, and we're going to run the tar command, and I'm going to sat dash C, capital J, P, F, and I'm going to paste this distroot build environment. We'll call it dist temp tools dot txz. So now this is an and dot, yeah, because we want to grab everything in that current directory. And that should be good. So this is going to be the f name of the file th that we're going to create that has all the contents of our build environment in it. So let's go over here and try to run this. Clear create. And there are some issues. Let's see. Building failed. Uh, I think we got something wrong in these scripts. Let's check that out. And it didn't actually fail the script either. So we'll go back in. Okay, the problem is that this distroot variable is missing, so I'm going to export it. And let's use dollar distroot there. So now those include and include scripts will be able to put them in the right place. And we run it and it's extracting. Just make sure this starts running. Okay. Yeah, it's doing the configure process now. And let's see. So we're gonna end off here. It actually finished all these get these strip warnings you can kind of ignore those they're not really that important now I'm actually gonna jump back here to this build to root and so we have this script that runs to root but we want to actually log in too um, so we want to have a way to enter our environment after we finish creating it and we'll use the U mount these binds that I had changing ownership. So I'm going to go back to that section and copy that change root and I'll create a new file which I'm going to call it enter root. OK. 
Okay, that should be it. We want to mount and unmount our uh, virtual file systems. Let's see. We can just take those from up here. And we want to make sure that prepare is set correctly. And that too. So I'm just going to copy all this. And we'll say entering instead of preparing. Don't need this stuff. So now we mounted. And then we need to unmount at the end. You mount. All right. Let's double check. Yeah, I think we got everything good to go. Let's see if we can run that. First, we need to make it the right permission. Do that as sudo. All right. So now let's do build scripts. Enter true. And we'll do it sudo e because you have to enter true as sudo. And you can see we're in our new environment. So I can say pwd du sh dot 3.3 gigabytes size. You can see our file systems are mounted, but we don't necessarily have access to some things. So let's clear. Okay, going back, let's make sure everything is in git up to date now. So what I'm going to do is say git status. Let's see, build, create. Yeah, our build scripts aren't in there yet. So what I'll need to do is, you yeah, know, that was just a test file. So let me remove that. Git status. So yeah, build scripts, we're going to want to add um, build env and we don't want to include this temporary tools txz because you don't want to upload those gigantic files directly into git so I'll put that in my git ignore just as a separate line now if I say git clear and git status now it's not showing it in there and it's git ignore is modified I'm going to git add, and it looks like I have some kind of issue adding. Now after a little troubleshooting, it seemed to be permissions issue. I'm changing the ownership to LLD and dist build, and I'm running as an LLD user. Because that's what I really created the git project under. So I can just do git add build env build scripts. There you go. Now if I say git status, you can see all the new files are created in there. I can commit that. I'll just say added build env scripts. Okay, now I can push it. You just gotta log in, and then we should be good to go. Let's clear that. I can go back to uh, Git and just see. We see Git status shows everything's committed. Okay, I think that's enough for this one. We have our build environment complete. We were able to enter it in a change route, so that's where we would uh, start doing the packages. And um, I think in the next video, we're going to start talking about how we're going to build a package manager, how it's going to be set up, how the packages are going to be structured, and all that. And um, so, again, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching.